everybody, Donna with Photonic Health, and this is our version of Health Made Simple. And today's guest is Jenny Dean of floppycats.com, and her specialty is ragdolls. And as of this moment, her ragdoll kitty, Charlie, is joining us as well. So welcome, Jenny and Charlie. Thank you. Thank you for having us. He's so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's the reason that we're connected because that's why I reached out to you originally. Right. And well, well, well there he goes. There he Cat, goes. Cats, they're so unpredictable, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so Jenny and I actually met. She reached out to us because she was looking for some help um, with her kitty. And uh, of course, we do our best to help everybody that we can. And it just so happened that uh, Brian and I have rag dolls as well. So we share something in common. We both love the breed. And I don't know that many people really know about the breed or really have an understanding about the breed. So um, Jenny, this is, you know, your way more your expertise. I just have two of them and they're my first rag dolls that I've had. And so I know what mine are like, but um, you want to, you want to just share and tell everybody a little bit about rag dolls? Sure. So the rag doll breed started in the 1960s in California. Um, that's when a lady uh, named Ann Baker created them. And I don't really know a lot of the details of the history. I'm, I mean, I've looked into it, but I don't really retain all of that. Um, but my aunt saw, I think it was on the cover of Time magazine in the 1980s, saw a ragdoll cat and said, I need to have one. Um, and my parents didn't want, or my father didn't want cats. And, um, but this cat that my aunt got was the coolest cat. Uh, oh, he was so cool. His name was Halston and she uh, had trained German shepherds. And so she had trained this cat to do a number of things, including giving you kisses. So I had been raised with dogs at that point. And, you know, a dog's kiss was like smooth and nice. And when you went up to Halston, it was like, you know, sandpaper on your cheek. And I was like, what in the world? Anyway, he was um, such a cool cat. And I started begging my parents for a rag doll and um, for two years. And my mom finally said to my dad, I know that we made a pact when we got married that we wouldn't have cats, but we can't deny this kid a cat anymore. She wants cats so badly. So uh, my parents act, or my mom's parents actually gifted me my first rag doll. Um, and then he died of FIP at the age of two. And then my parents ended up, or my mom spoke with the vet because at that time FIP was incurable and now there are options there. But this was in like 1986 or 87. And then in 1989, um, my mom adopted two more rag dolls. And then one of them died of FIP at 10 months. And the one that survived was a cat that I grew up with named Rags. Um, and he, he lived until he was 19 and a half years old. But Rags is the reason that I founded Floppy Cats because I wanted, well, there, there's a lot of behind, you know, how things unfold in your life. Um, my uncle, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I graduated from college and I was working in customer service and inside sales, but my uncle said, you know, what are your three favorite things? And I said, rags, ice cream, and field hockey. And he's like, oh, you'll never make a living doing any of those things. So it was kind of like, uh, I'm motivated very much when someone says no, then I, right. then I say yes. Right. Um, it's so, kind of one of those hold my beer type things if you're yes. a beer gal, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I started Floppy Cats um, to kind of like prove him wrong. And I thank him to this day because of that. But um, what it did for me, Rags, I started in two, I started Floppy Cats in 2008 and Rags passed in 2009. Um, and it was my opportunity to kind of start understanding the breed more because I, I knew just that I liked rag dolls. Um, my whole family has had rag dolls. My, Currently on my mom's side of the family, there are 11 rag dolls. Um, wow. And there were 
we we were down to nine after my parents' cats passed, um, and now we're back up to eleven because my my cousin adopted two recently. So I was around them all the time, but I didn't know the inner workings of the breed and stuff. And so I I'm not so much like on the breeder show side of things, I'm more like the cat owner and, you know, dealing with the things that you end up encountering, um, like my cat, Charlie, who was in the beginning and all of his allergies. So as far as ragdolls are concerned, you know, they're known to be limp. That's why they're called a ragdoll. So that when you pick them up, they're supposed to go limp in your hands. Uh, one thing that I have learned like 100% from having floppy cats is that you cannot rely on a breed stereotype ever. <laughs> um, I think there are th three, maybe four of all the ragdolls in my family. And I think there's been like 21 over the years that, that are truly floppy. Like you, my mom's cat that recently passed in December, 2020 was one of my soulmate cats. His name was Camus. Um, he's the one I did ozone therapy on. And I mean, you, you could not pick him up one handed cause he just like flop out of your, your hands, flop but your, right. Yes. Yeah. Um, and my cousin has one of her new kittens is definitely a floppy cat. Right. And so I don't know what made you want to get ragdolls. Ah, so, um, we had had two cats before they were just domestic short hairs and um, they both, um, both of them had died within a year of each other and they were like 18 and 19 years old. And then I had also lost um, two dogs. So in a span of a year, I had lost two cats and two of my dogs. And I was just like, not in a good emotional place. And so Brian, my husband was like, we need, we need more cats. Like you, you, cause I just adore cat. Like my two cats were my world. I just like, and, um, so he, but, but the, the downside was the hair, like the domestic short hairs. Like we also had golden retrievers and I don't know who shed more the golden retrievers that weighed 60 and 70 pounds or the domestic short hairs that weighed you know, seven and nine pounds because mm -hmm. it would, it, I mean, you know, you just run your hand down them and like you would just come up with hair all the time. And so I'm like, honey, I love you. And that's so great that you want to get more cats for me. Um, but I just don't really want to deal with the hair right now. We were renting and, you know, like, and he goes, no, no, he goes, I found this breed of cats. They're called rag dolls. And I go, okay. And he shows me a picture and I was blown away. It's like, oh my God, these are like the most gorgeous cats I have ever seen. And he goes, well, they say that the breed, like they don't shed very much. And I'm like, oh, BS. You, you cannot tell me that that long haired cat is not going to shed very much. Like that is just, I don't believe it just don't believe it. And so, you know how the law of the universe works. Like once you, you know, once you say, Hey, I'm going to buy something, then they show up everywhere. Mm -hmm. So literally like Brian, I mean, every night he was online, like looking at these rag dolls and I'm just like, no, we're not getting any. We're not, we're not, no, we're not getting any. We're not getting any. I'm not getting a long haired cat because I don't need any more hair in my house. And, um, so then we started running into people that had rag dolls. And that was always my first question. The first question was, how much do they shed? And across the board, people were like, you really, they don't shed that much. And I was like, and I mean, we're in Florida. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking like, it's just going to be like a shedding, you know, festival all the time. Yeah. And, and so, um, and then the other thing that really attracted us to them was these people that we ran into, we, we didn't know them. And we happened to like go knock on their door that we were going to their house for something. And they opened the door and here's their rag dolls just like strewn out in the middle of the floor right behind them. And when you walked in, they didn't run away. And I was like, 
that's not typical cat behavior. <laughs> and they said, oh, that's just part of the breed. Like that's just them. They're pretty laid back and relaxed. And so I was like, okay, okay. So that's how we ended up with our rag dolls is, you know, we were sold on the doesn't shed very much. And we were also sold on the not scaredy cats, like, you know, the domestic short hairs were. And that's how we got into rag dolls. Yeah. And they have completely lived up to our expectations. I mean, they're, um, you know, like Max, my one cat really could care less, you know, like there would be a tornado going through my house and he'd be like, hey, can somebody get me a margarita? I'm cool. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and with the, um, and with the shedding, like it, they, yes, they do shed and there's times when they, I call it blowing their coat because we're used to having goldens that, you know, have the double coat thing. And I don't know if, if rag dolls are that way, if they have a double coat or if that's, is that, do you find that that's part of the breed or do you find that opposite? Um, well, rag dolls aren't supposed to have an undercoat and that's actually why they're sometimes thought of as hypoallergenic, I guess with, um, people that are allergic to cats are either allergic to cat saliva or the undercoat. So okay. if they're not allergic to saliva, then rag dolls will work. Um, cause my aunt, the one that, that had Halston had a friend who could be around Halston and didn't have a problem. But as far as not shedding, <laughs> no, That's not I mean, your experience. No, but I do, but you you've know, never, but you've never had domestic short hairs either. Um, well, I, one of my ex-boyfriends had a domestic short hair and she, uh, we were living in New Mexico, so it's different than I live in Kansas city. Um, right. so maybe it was different there without the humidity. Um, but no, I don't think she shed as much as my two. No. Okay. All right. No. Well, and I didn't know that they were supposed to be hypoallergenic. So that also explains a lot because we'll have people stay at our house or come visit that are allergic to cats and they don't really seem to have any issues coming to, oh, my, good. Coming to my house. I didn't know that. So I learned something new about the breed. Yes. Well, I don't think you can say it across the board because even, you know, like a Sphinx cat that doesn't have any hair, they still have cat saliva and they're right. still cleaning themselves all the time. So it's going to be all over their body. So yeah, right. it just depends on what allergy the person has. And I don't know how you test that other than I hang out with some rag dolls and see what happens. Right. And have one of them lick you. So like, yes. uh, there, there you go. There so you shedding go. wise, you haven't had much of a problem. Wow. No. Do you groom them on a regular basis? Mm. No, I, I, no, I, 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 I hate to say it, but no, no, don't, no, no. It's fine. I don't, I don't groom mine on a regular basis either because they absolutely hate it. Even though I started as a kittens, they still hate it, which right. is so weird to me because Rags, Camus and Murphy, who are my oh, Rags, everybody knows, but Camus and Murphy were my parents' cats and they all just like, yes, please groom me more. My cats are like, <laughs> Yeah. So, well, I don't my, agree with them. yeah. So my one female, and I don't know like how much is like, so I've got a male and a female. My female has much shorter hair than my male does, but her fur, she feels like a bunny almost like she's super silky soft and I never have to like never have to do anything grooming wise other than clipper nails. Um, and then my boy kitty that's got the super long hair, like I don't I don't want to say groom him out, like I don't brush him out all the time. Um, I maybe brush him once a year, which is again really bad to say, but it's also kind of a testament to like how easy keepers they are. Um, yes. The only thing I do have to do is like his mate, like his underneath yes. gets so long and he'll sit there and he'll just lick himself and it'll be so long he can't even get to the end. And yes. so I will cut like, like it's a bad haircut thing. Like, but I just go in and take the scissors and just chop it off. Um, and 
is that what you find with most like i know whether whether they like it or not like do you find that they all have different types of coats or do you feel like they're even though they're long haired they're a little bit easier to keep up than say like another type of like a long haired dog no, they definitely have different types of coats. Sorry for my eye, eye contact. Charlie was walking around. I didn't know if he'd come, but my cats aren't used to me being like stable <laughs> in this room um, <laughs> and not moving. Um, yes, there are, oh man, there's a, a breeder in Oklahoma that I've um, spoken to a lot through email about coats. Her name's Stormy Nell of Family Time Rags. And she, um, I think there's three or four different coat types because now you can, um, sorry, Charlie just jumped off and like um, lost his back legs for a second, which surprised me. Um, so you can do a DNA test and a lot of breeders do this DNA test so that they can test for, you know, genetic diseases. Right. Um, but the, the test also will tell you the coat type. And I think it starts with like an M like there's like M3, M4, M5, and I'm so sorry if I'm misspeaking no, no, here. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, and, and so the reason that Stormy and I got into this conversation is because Camus's coat was very similar to your females. And that is the, the goal for a ragdoll coat, um, that it should be bunny-like, luxurious, velvety, like it's nothing you've ever felt. Um, right. And one of, I mean, I, I miss Camus for his soul, but one of the reasons I also was so upset about his death was because I was like, I'm never going to be able to feel that again. Like I right. haven't had a cat like that right. um, ever. And all of our ragdolls, I've never had that coat and I want it again. And so that's, um, yes, it's very different. So Charlie and Trigg's coats, Charlie, um, Charlie's coat is like he stuck his paw in a an electrical outlet is how I say it because it sticks straight up like straight out oh, fun. Um, and Triggs it lays more flat okay and I mean I have a YouTube channel as you know and there was a vet in Scandinavia that was watching one of my videos and she's like oh Charlie has a crepe coat and I was like, what, what's a crepe coat? Um, and it made so much sense to me. I was so grateful for her comment um, because she said in Scandinavia, they love crepe coats because it takes forever for them to get wet. And I was like, yes, oh my gosh. Because when my kid, cats were kittens, they um, had diarrhea, you know, and I'd bring them into the shower with me. And I would like gallons of water on Charlie to get him <laughs> wet so that I could get him sudsy. Right. So that made so much sense and then she said and he's um he should be like very sensitive to rain or wind and i was like yes you know triggs walking around and the sprinkles like i let my cats outside in my fenced in right. backyard with me every day um they don't wander the neighborhood but if it's raining or if it's windy i mean charlie reacts as if someone's actually pushing him with wind right. and it, i was like what is the matter with this cat is he neurotic so what she, um, he's up on the cat tree and he's looking at me like, stop talking about me like that. Right? <laughs> um, and she said, so Charlie has flat hair follicles, whereas Trig has round. And so he's super sensitive. And so, you know, this whole last year of all of these things that I've had to work with, with Charlie, um, anybody that encounters him, whether it's a chiropractor, a vet, whomever I say, touch him firmly. Like, I know he looks, oh, he's so fluffy, you know, and they want to touch him lightly, but he, he you know, is like he jerking around. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, th there's definitely different coat types. And, um, I appreciate the education I've gotten through floppy cats because of YouTube for my own cats. Right. Um, I, I feel like I understand them a lot more now. I love that. See, I learned something else new. I had no, I had no idea, you know, when we, when we went to pick out our kittens, you know, the lady came out and she had two different litters and it was just like, okay, pick out whichever ones you want. And we're like, okay. And you know, like whichever one stayed with us is, is basically what we got. So we had, right. no, we had no, we had no idea. Um, yes. We had no idea and we wouldn't change it for the world either. Um, no, I, yeah. Yeah. I Isn't it amazing? Like, I just love community um, because we learn so much from each other. Yes. Like, we, you know, we, we learn so much from each other. 
Yeah. So what, um, what's probably the biggest takeaway? Um, like when people come to your website, floppy cats, like, can you explain a little bit more about what floppy cats is other than just about ragdolls? Yes. Um, so it's kind of morphed over the years because I, I didn't really know what I was doing at first. Um, but I wanted to unite ragdoll cat owners so that we could share like tips and tricks. Um, but I guess it didn't, it doesn't matter if they're ragdoll cat owners. Cause that's one thing that I've learned throughout the years is that I don't, a cat is a cat, you know, the right. big difference between a ragdoll is the long hair or, you know, the long toe tufts or something, but I haven't really found anything to be super breed specific because you can have, um, you know, misbehaving ragdolls. Uh, I was emailing with right. a lady last night who's, whose cat has um, become aggressive towards her and um, he wasn't as a kitten. So, you know, that that is a, a cat behavior. Something that has triggered him to be doing that. And so you you have to kind of navigate and figure out what what caused that. So the so floppy cats um, talks a lot about the ragdoll breed, but then I do a lot of um, product reviews and I have a corresponding YouTube. And then I, I share Charlie and Trig a lot on social media. Um, and then, you know, we talk about other people's cats and where they're from. Uh, but the biggest thing, the, the most rewarding thing for me is, well, this, this story, I feel like I say a lot, but this lady I'd moved to Houston, Texas from Scotland and she was living, I think they were living with her mother-in-law maybe. And the mother-in-law loved like Glade or Airwick plug-in air fresheners. Right. And um, she had had her cat, I think it was like five or six years old. And she had just had a baby and then had like a two-year-old and the cat had continuous diarrhea. And she, she said like, I, I don't want to get rid of my cat, but I'm at my wits end. I, you know, I've got young kids. I can't be cleaning up diarrhea all the time. I think it would be best if he was rehomed. And so she reached out to me because um, I, I will help people rehome their cats um, when I can. I don't want to be a rescuer or a rehomer, but I right. understand if you have a ragdoll, you want to go to a ragdoll community. Right. So, um, Anyway, I said, are you 100% sure you want to do this or do you want to reach out to the community and see if anyone has any ideas? And someone said, remove the Glade air fresheners, um, you know, from the house. And within two weeks, the cat stopped having diarrhea. Yeah. So that's when I go to bed at night and feel good about what I do because that cat got to stay with his family and just having that peace of mind and like not having to worry about that anymore as a cat owner is right. huge. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That That's awesome. I love, I love that. Like, because, you know, it, it's sort of interesting um, because I know everybody that's on your channel and our, my channel as well, they're really into doing whatever is best for the animal. And a lot of times if people feel like they have to rehome their animal, it's not necessarily because they want to, it's just because they've had a problem that they have not been able to solve. And yes. they don't, they just don't know what to do anymore. And they just feel so bad that they, they're just like, well, maybe like, maybe it would be better off with somebody else. Yes. And so to be able to provide that solution or provide a solution to them, that was super simple, right? Like cat people, like if you own cats, you know how sensitive they are to artificial chemicals and perfumes and dyes. And so going into a environment where there is that, or maybe people don't know, like maybe people that own some some people that own cats don't understand how incredibly sensitive their system is, but it, uh, you know, just to be able to change something super simple out like that and just ha have a happy cat, healthy cat and, and a happy cat mom. That's amazing. Yes. And even me who has dealt with a thousand emails about all this kind of stuff, I had switched my laundry detergent to another, um, brand than this last year thinking it would be better for my cat it was supposed to be more natural and all that kind of stuff so right. charlie started having horrible allergies last year 
um, as you know. And um, anyway, I couldn't get it under control. Like everything I tried, um, I was constantly treating the problem and not getting to the cause of it. Um, and I had a thyroid disease for years and I, I know the difference between treating the cause versus treating the problem. And I wanted to treat the cause and I, it was making me crazy, um, trying to figure it out. And I think there's a lot to it with Charlie, but I ended up finding out and I think it was, um, maybe April 1st. Um, he was on steroids. He was on a number of things. Now he's all off of all of that stuff, but usually steroids would completely calm him down. And, um, he was calm because he was on steroids and I was working on floppy cats, um, on my desktop in the basement. And he had jumped up to be with me. And usually, you know, my arms are, are my, my, you know, fingers are like this and he's in between here. And he, he was there maybe like five minutes and then he jumped off and started going berserk, like itching, licking. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> no. Um, so, but I had just had, um, a, I was working, I've been working with a lot of healers trying to figure this out. And one of them was Sarah Griffiths. Uh, she works with Adored Beast Apothecary or she's connected somehow with them. And she had written an article when it's your own pet it's really hard to like take a step back and and look at the situation because you're just like in pure hell of like stop just stop um so i had read that article um uh, and and i was like okay okay what's different here what could have caused this and i was wearing a um a sweatshirt that i had hung to dry not in my dryer hung to dry mm -hmm. so it the laundry detergent smell was a lot stronger so I was like oh my gosh is it the laundry detergent yeah it, it is it was not tied pods but they were in pods yeah. so I went and grabbed one from the bag and I put it like right in front of Charlie um who was sitting on the ground and he he looked at it like do you want me to play with that and so he just went like and and I was like well I guess not and 10 minutes later all hell broke loose he was yeah itching, licking, crazy nightmare. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, this whole time, like the laundry detergent. Yeah. Um, I think the laundry detergent was a huge component, but Charlie's microbiome is really messed up from being over vaccinated and flea meds and all that stuff. Yeah. So there were problems here before this problem came about, but the next day I washed everything and that's the other thing is you have to think about it's almost like if you get fleas in your house you have to think of or if you everything. get poison ivy everything you everything. touch but the towels yeah. the, my clothes the sheets you know yeah. everything the duvet cover um so yeah. that really helped getting the those fragrances oh, out good. of my house yeah yeah that we we encountered that um with our domestic short hair we had somebody come stay with us and he brought in his own laundry detergent and super perfumed and my one poor kitty like she shows up and her little face was just all her eyes were swollen and like and I was like oh my god and so of course I took her to the bed and he's like well she's having an allergic reaction so I'm like going what do we change what do we change the only thing that changed was his laundry detergent and that's exactly what it was and so now I just use free and clear everything. And that way I don't have to worry about it. But it's also like, if they have an allergy to it, then what is it doing to us as well? Yes. Yes. So yeah. um, it, it sounds really silly. Yes. Jenny, it has been like almost an hour that we've been. Oh, good. <laughs> I know. Um, so for everybody that has any questions about cats in general or if they want more information on the breed um, for rag dolls what is the best way for them to find you just go to floppycats.com um, and then we're on pretty much every social media so they can you know just look, search floppycats.com and they will find you yes yes awesome Yay. yes we'll, we'll give your fur babies a really big hug from us I will. And, um, and for everybody else, go on and check 
floppycats.com. Um, it's a great site and she posts such super cute stuff. I'm on there as well. Um, everything she posts is really, really amazing. So thank you. And, and please pet and love your kitties for me too. Absolutely. Thank you, Donna. <laughs>